we discuss about samma vacha samma kamanta and also three fall virati like sampatta virati samadana virati and samucheda virati and sampatta virati was four fold as pakati virati achar virati dhammata virati and pubba hituka so now we come to samma ajiva samma ajiva means abstaining from wrong life abstaining from from livelihood so uh, now this livelihood here means <coughs> the things that a person does to sustain his life and the life of his family members to support the others we are connect who are connected to their life so in order to when a someone does immoral acts most often most often it falls into any of the acts like killing stealing sexual misconduct lying and so forth so if someone leads his act life with such immoral deeds his livelihood with such immoral deeds then it his his occupation is considered as miccha aji then also in the uh, suttanta pitaka buddha has mentioned about five occupations that are uh, uh, virtuous in the devotee should not do in the vanijja sutta and also for monks even some acts even if doesn't fall into uh, any of the breaching of any of the rules concerning samma vacha and samma kamanta there are certain acts monks should not do in order to uh, live their life for example uh, fortune telling telling for uh, like uh, telling about the future forecast in the future and getting uh, requisites due to that so these kinds of livelihood are called wrong livelihood concerning the monks and also uh, boasting himself uh, showing him and also sometimes pretending about false attainments and getting the attraction these are also considered as wrong livelihood so regarding monks long wrong livelihood there are lots of detailed explanations given in the literature in suttas in commentary literature in visuddhi marga so abstaining from all these immoral deeds acts which are done for the sake of one's livelihood is called miccha ajiva we go to the hand up <clears throat> samma ajiva is the abstaining of the mind from immoral physical and verbal acts done as one's livelihood it is a mental factor with an intrinsic characteristic the following is how samma ajiva has been explained by the buddha in the mahasati patthana sutta so it says katamocha bikkave samma ajivo ida bikkave ariya sabako miccha ajivam pahaya samma ajive jivikam kappe ayam muchiti bikkave samma ajivo so the translation goes what monks is samma ajivo in this dispensation monks a disciple of the noble buddha having abandoned immoral livelihood lives with a moral livelihood this monk is called samma aji so abandoning wrong livelihood and uh, living a proper livelihood is called samma ajiva according to the satipatthana sutta so if you look at the translation here the word arya savaka has been translated as aryasya buddhasya savaka it means not a noble disciple disciple of the noble buddha so when we say arya savaka we have few definitions one defin- this in this sutta the <coughs> definition should be taken as Uh, because uh, even a putujjana person who is not a noble 
uh, noble uh, disciple can also be called Arya Savaka because of the noble nature of the teacher of the Buddha. Right? So otherwise, uh, uh, this virtue may only to be noble disciples. Right? So that's why I have translated. I have given in the notes that the translation was done with reference to the commentary on Satchami Bhanga Sutta. The term Arya Savaka is defined as Aryas uh, Aryas Buddha uh, Savaka. Arya Savaka means the disciple of the Buddha who is a noble. Then, uh, <coughs> with regard to uh, the difference of Samma Vacha and Kamanta and Ajiva, beings perform immoral deeds sometimes due to their defilements, anger, jealousy, craving, and sometimes to fun, sometimes to show their skills. So, if someone abstains from immoral acts which are done with such objectives, such uh, motives, then that abstaining is called Samma Kamanta and Samma Vacha accordingly, accordingly. But if someone restrains from immoral acts which are done for the sake of one's livelihood, then it is called Samma Ajiv. I'll read out a translation, a quotation translated from the Renukana Chandavela Mahatera's Abhidhamma Dharma Mulika Karma. Beings perform evil deeds due to anger, jealousy, wrong view, for fun and sometimes to show their skills. Some do evil deeds as their livelihood in order to making a living. Samma Vacha is the mental restraining from immoral speech done due to opposite reasons such as anger and mental anger and jealousy and so forth. In the same manner, inhibition of the mind from immoral physical acts done due to the same reasons are called Samma Kamman. On the other hand, restraining from performing immoral verbal and physical acts as a livelihood is to support one's own self and family is called Samma Aji. So this is a very important point because sustaining our life becomes the most prominent act as I consider in everyone's life. So and also we have a great responsibility for the family and also to sustain them, sometimes mostly the wife, children, sometimes the husband, sometimes the parents and the relatives also becomes a great responsibility to certain people, certain, most of the humans. So therefore, they uh, put lots of effort in order to sustain the life of themselves and also ones who are related to their lives. Then, in sometimes, beings who are really virtuous, humans who are really virtuous, may be uh, may abstain from immoral deeds like because because of their ethical uh, idea uh, ethical uh, moralities that they follow but when it comes to uh, difficulties for them to sustain their life or sustain their families even a virtuous person there is a very high possibility for the sake of the life for the sake of the life of his family he may go into perform immoral deeds because there is a justification within them. This is otherwise I cannot sustain. Or otherwise my family cannot sustain. So they can, they can justify it. The thing is, it is inherited within the social beings like humans that they take a huge responsibility to uh, take care of their family members and there's nothing to say about their own lives. Right? So I'll read out the paragraph because I think it's... Uh, it gives a good idea. Supporting of our, our own lives is the most significant among all the acts we do. In addition, human beings, humans being social creatures, also pay a great consideration towards supporting the lives of their family members. The life of the family is deeply rooted in the basic impulses, which lead men into increasing responsibilities of the family and sustain them in the fulfillment of their task. So I have taken a quotation. In times of crisis, men may work and fight and die for their country, but their toil for their families is for the whole life. So family, they consider is something which is a, a burden, that, but something that they have to take care of for the whole life. So it is something which is rooted in the uh, selves of the human beings. Even a virtuous man or a woman may turn into immoral acts when he or she finds difficulties to sustain his or her family. And there is nothing to say regarding situations in which there, there is less support to maintain one's own life. Therefore, abstaining from immoral occupation, Samma Ajiva, can only be done with great courage, especially when happenings in the life are not favorable. So, 
Sama Ajiva, I consider, is the place where our sila can be tested. It like even at a very difficult occasion, if we may, if we don't uh, breach this sila, and still keeps on a, a simple living to in order to be virtuous. It means we have lots of courage, lots of uh, uh, moral, spiritual qualities within us to live in such a manner. Right? So in the Vanitya Sutta of Anguttara Nikaya, Buddha has mentioned about five immoral uh, occupations that a lay devotee, Buddhist lay devotee, a disciple of the Buddha, should abstain from. He says the Upasaka, by a Upasaka. They are the Sapta Vanitya, selling weapons. Sap, the first one is Sapta, TTH. That is the aspiration. Second is without the aspiration, Sapta Vanitya. Sapta Vanitya here means for selling, and selling humans for slavery. Not animals, slavery for slavery. Then Mansa Manija. Mansa Manija doesn't mean just selling meat. It refers to selling the meat of animals, having domesticated and killed them. Right? So killing the meat of the animals they have adapted and killed. Uh, selling the meat of the animals. This should also include selling animals for meat and hunters killing meat, having killed beasts in the forest. Right? They also all should be considered as Sapta. Uh, Mansa Manicha. Then Madhya Manicha selling liquor, selling poison, Bisa Manicha. This also includes selling pesticides to control pests. You know, in agriculture, they, they have certain poisons used to uh, kill certain pests. So, this also includes into Bisa Manicha. So, they are harmful to others. And also, uh, that uh, doesn't give, bring beneficial uh, results. In addition to these, uh, these occupations, which are mentioned in the Manija Sutta, like uh, uh, cheating others in training, like mixing sand with, in, in countries, brown sugar. Brown sugar doesn't mean the drug, it's the sugar which is brown, right? Paying goods to be sold incorrectly, lying in courts to mean his, mean his clients, piracy, you see in the, in the sea, taking uh, from the ships, plundering the ships, right? Piracy. They are all considered as mitchaj. If someone abstains from such immoral acts, that for the sake of the livelihood, that inhibition of the mind is called samma aji. Right? That is the thing. So it's like uh, abstaining from wrong livelihood. So if you go into the monk's livelihood, for the life, there are suttas, like I have given the references. Tuataka Sutta. Buddha mentions about the correct livelihood of a, of, of a monk. And also in the Diga Nikaya, Brahma Jala Sutta, under Mahasila, Buddha has explained about various types of wrong livelihoods a monk should restrain from. Then in Visuddhi Magga and also Mahanidesa contains information regarding the wrong livelihood of monks. When a monk restrains from these sort of acts and, also, and then starts to determine and starts to abide with the rules laid down by the Buddha, Concerning the sustaining of his life, this his virtue is he is together with Samma Ajiva, and his virtue, this virtue concerning the purity of his life, is called Ajiva Parisuddhi Sila. Right? This uh, Sila concerning this uh, Samma Ajiva is called Ajiva Parisuddhi Sila. Right? It is concerned with the Monks, uh, Matsama. Then the difference, there is a nice simile I also have quoted from late Dr. Amradasa Ratnapala. Uh, simile he shows to show the difference between Sama Vacha and Ajiva. With that, we can figure out how it differs, Sama Ajiva differs from Kama or Kama as well. The, according to the simile, a, lo, uh, a person is working, a farmer is working under, uh, in a farm uh, of another person. So, as a, under the agreement, according to the agreement, the farmer has to give some portion to the owner. In Sinhalese, we call it under. It's like you have to give a portion to the real landowner. So, this farmer later thinks to plunder the or loot the whole farm, take the whole farm to him. Uh, then he uh, doesn't give the portion. And so, what happens? The uh, person, the, uh, the real landowner, goes to a uh, Suit uh, file a case in the courts. So the farmer who has uh, the stealing intention goes to the law, go to a lawyer and gives some money and asks him to win the 
uh, land immorally, which doesn't belong to him righteously, which, uh, which belongs to a, which, which has a real owner. So the lawyer takes the money first and then he considers, it's not proper for me to lie, because if I want to win my client, I have to lie in the courts. So then he thinks it's not proper for me to do that. Then he abstains from this act and returns the money. So at that time, his mind is occupied by Samma Vacha. And in the case, if the, if the lawyer thinks it's not proper for me to run my livelihood in such a manner because I'm a lawyer and it's not proper for me to live such a livelihood lying and earning. So then if he thinks in such a manner and abstains and returns the money, at that time, his mind is occupied with Samma Aji. So likewise, the same act of lying, if he abstains, considering about the wrong livelihood, that is called Micha Ajiva, Samma Ajiva. And if he abstains from, uh, for other reasons, that is called Samma Vacha, right? That is called Samma Vacha. So this is the difference that we have to understand. Then with regard to Samma Kammanta and Samma Ajiva, I think it is easy to understand the differences. Then another term, the Samma Vajiva can also be interpreted as the effort one puts to in order to live a proper livelihood. For example, especially for monks, if they are living with uh, uh, Pindapata, like going for arms round and abiding with Sila, it has to be done with great courage and a lot of effort. Right? So that in, in, in practicing this uh, Ajiva Parishuddhi Sila, Virya is the most predominant factor. Virya is the most predominant factor. Through your additional knowledge, we know there are four types of silas. First sila is called Patimokka Sangat Sila. Patimokka Sangat Sila is, is kept protected because uh, with the help of Sadda. Faith. That's why we keep the precepts. These are the reiterated precepts. Sama Rajivar Siddha also, Sila also have certain precepts, but it is related to our livelihood, living, uh, sustaining our life. So there is lots of effort is necessary because we have to endure all difficulties in order to uh, keep our livelihood pure. Then we have another Sila called uh, Indriya Sangras. Indriya Sangar Sila, to protect the Indriya Sangar Sila, the most predominant faculty is Sati. Right? We have to be very mindful in order to keep this Sila. To guard our faculties, not letting the uh, defilements to occupy our mind due to the objects which comes into through six senses. Then we have the fourth type of Sila, is called Pachaya Sangar Sila. Pachaya san. Pachaya Sangha Sila is the Sila of uh, using the requisites with proper contemplation, proper consideration. Like you do in the dining hall, like Patisanka, Yonisur, Bindapata, right? Contempl with the contemplation. So for this Sila to protect, the predominant faculty is Panya. Panya is Amoha. Because one has to see why actually I'm using the requisites. It's through understanding. It's not only the it's not only uh, for the he has to see why why should I use them if I if I doesn't use them what are the what are the problems that I could I, I may encounter and what are the benefits of using them and also how to maintain our mind without getting indulged in such requisites and also to increase the not to increase the defilements if you look into the for this type of pachesan nisita sila. For uh, uh, increase the level of Pachya the, the, the sutta which was given is Ariyas Ariya Vansa Sutta. Narima Sutta Buddha has explained in detail how a person can develop this Pachya It's not the word Pachya Sangha is not given in the sutta, but you find it shows how to find the uh, 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 requisites in a proper manner and how to keep his mind without letting it to fall into uh, falling into attachment and also other sorts of defilements due to why he is using the requisites. So this is uh, a special sutta with related to the requisites. So among these, for the Ajiva Parasuti Sila, the predominant factor, uh, faculty, which is necessary to keep it pure, 
is the virya. So therefore, the effort that we put to keep to make our livelihood more virtuous, to live a virtuous livelihood, can also be termed as samma ajiva. Right? It's, it's also be called, called as samma ajiva. Then the, 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 the term has been defined as as for the Samma Vacha and Kamanta. When someone has determined to abstain from immoral livelihoods with the help of Samma Ajiva, his way of living will become righteous. Hence, a sub commentary on Dhamma Dhyayadi Sutta has defined the term thus Samma Ajiva ti ete nati ti Samma Ajiva, mental factor out of which one lives righteously is called Samma Ajiva. Right? That is how the definition is being given. Then we come into, now we have discussed about uh, the three uh, restraining faculties, Samma, Vacha, Kamanta, and Ajiva. And collectively, uh, regarding these Virati uh, Chetasikas, there are two, uh, three, actually three uh, uh, aspects to be discussed. I'll be talking only about one regarding how they eradicate the defilements in with regard to normal path and also with regard to the uh, it has to be discussed regarding the objects of this virati and also uh, with regard to the uh, uh, the eradication of kelesas in the noble path with, with respect to noble paths and also the objects of virati and uh, I forgot sorry for that <laughs> went out of my mind uh, this is uh, so virati chaitasik and also uh, how how it is related to our uh, practice initial stages of practice and why it doesn't appear in in certain chittas. Right? So virati chaitasika appears in eight. If you give attention to five point five nine, virati chaitasika appears in eight mahakusala chittas sometimes and one at a time. That's the point. Virati chaitasika in the eight mahakusala chittas. It doesn't appear in kiriya chittas. Why? Because the arahants who has possessed the eight maha kiriya chittas have no necessity of abstaining from evil because they have no potential of immorality within them. So virati is necessary when there is an immoral poss possibility of performing immorality. So our mind stream restrains from falling into such unwholesome Therefore, it doesn't appear in eight Mahakini Chittas. It appears in eight Mahakusala Chittas sometimes. What are the occasions? When we observe the sila, when we keep our precepts in occasions that encourages us to, us to breach them, and also when we when we abstain from immoral acts, considering various types of customs or our age, clan, whatever other reasons. So in these occasions, virati arises, and in Mahakusala Chittas, it arises one at a uh, not always, but only when we restrain and one at a time. It's not that Samma Vacha and Kamanta never arises together in the Mahakrasana Chitta. Also, uh, and Ajiva doesn't arise with other, other two, only one at a time. But when it comes to the Lokuttara Chittas, eight Lokuttara Chittas, they always arise together. In eight Lokuttara Chittas, they always arise together. In Mahakrasana Chittas, they arise one at a time. Right? One at a time. So when a person determines to abstain from immoral physical and verbal acts or restraints from such acts when certain circumstances encourage him to do so, one, on, uh, one of the three Virati Chesikas arises in one of the eight Mahakusala Chittas accordingly. Right? Eight Mahakusala Chittas accordingly. For instance, when someone determines not to lie, at that moment Samma Vaja Chesika arises in any of the eight Mahakusala Chittas. When a person restrains from killing a mosquito while it is biting him, Samma Kamanta arises if any, uh, in any of the eight Mahakusana Chitta. In occasions, a person determines not to, not, uh, not to follow immoral livelihoods, Samma Ajiva arises in him in any of the eight Mahakusana Chitta. But one at a time, not mixing two, they don't arise together. Right? At the attainment of eight noble paths, all three Virati Chesikas arise, permanently eliminating the respective tendencies for immoral acts. Related to the uh, Madras. So, with regard to this, when we are talking about Virati, we are exclusively talking, uh, discussing about the immoral acts done physically and verbally. So, according to the Buddhist, according to the Buddhist teachings, there are seven acts, three physical acts and four verbal acts. So, what are they? They are Panadipata, or we, we write in English, killing, stealing. 
sexual misconduct. Then we have lying, slandering, harsh word, harsh speech. Harsh speech means speech that hurts others, right? Insult others. They may do. I'm staying from Abhijja, Vyabhad, and Michaditi. Covetous, covetousness and uh, wish to destroy others, a very strong hatred, not only just hatredness, to wishing the destruction of others, and wrong views are not related to virati. They are not related to virati. They are related to mental abstaining. Right? So these are the uh, acts that are related to virati. So when we all, even a, a virtuous person may not perform these acts, he still has the potential or the tendency to perform such acts when the circumstances encourages. If unwise attention is paid at certain objects, these acts may be done by a uh, careless person. It is possible. But when someone attains the noble home, like attainments of the supramundane paths, some of the, the potentials related to these acts will be eradicated permanently. So a noble being who has eradicated a respective potential is incapable of performing that act till he attains the final deliverance. Right? It's like it's permanently gone. When there is no potency, there is uh, impos the, such act is impossible to happen. So the literature says that these four acts are eliminated by the Sota Pati. There is a Sutta which uh, I couldn't uh, give reference. Buddha mentions that it is the Sota Panna, Arya Savaka, would never perform these four acts. Would never perform these four acts. And also, he may not use alcohol liquor. Right? It's direct teachings of the Buddha. In Ratana Sutta, he mentioned about that a person may not do six types of acts. That six types of acts are killing matricide, patricide, and the five heinous deeds and hold the wrong, uh, strong wrong views. But in another different sutta, he mentions about he may not do such immoral acts. And also, you find fine in the Atthana, Metana, no, is Atthana, I think Atthana Sutta, right? Atthana Vagga, it's Buddha says the Sota Pandapugala may not kill any being, right? It, it is Jivita, uh, his mother, for he, he He says he doesn't kill, yeah. He doesn't kill mother, uh, mother, father and also sheds the Buddha's blood uh, and also sheds the, uh, breaks the Sangha. This, and in another sutta, I mentioned that he may not do this. Then, it's mentioned in the commentaries, when we come to the Sakadagami Vagga, the attainment of Sakadagami Vagga, there is no specific potential which is eradicated by the Sakadagami Vagga, which is not eradicated by Sotapata. It means Sakadagami Magga lessens the strength of the Kilesa. It doesn't eradicate any extra defilement or any extra potential. Then when it comes to Anagami, these two potentials are eradicated. Slandering and harsh speech. A Sota Panna may perform slandering, may do Vishnu Abhaja or speak harsh speech, uh, say harsh words. And there is a story regarding a Sota Panna insulting uh, Arahant without knowing. So the story goes as uh, uh, the both of them went for Pindapata. The senior monk was an Arahant and the Sota Panna was the younger monk. He had a strong stomach ache. So while he was being offered with Yagu, of, he was offered Yagu. So because of the pain, the Arahant quickly sat beside the house near uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a log and drank the Yagu. So it was very improper and impolite when regarding the uh, monk's customs. So the younger monk insulted him, this man, this monk has no virtue at all. This old monk has no virtue at all. So this was uh, like he said it with uh, dosa chitta, right, dosa chitta. So if someone does it uh, with the insulting mind, maybe he didn't do it with the insulting mind, but he uh, said some, some bad words toward that monk. So later on, this Arahant, after going back to the, uh, going back to the residence, 
called the younger monk and asked, have you attained any uh, refuge in this sasana? And then he said, yes, I am a sotapa. Then he said, you better not to try for other higher attainments because you have insulted an Allah. It's called Ari Upova. Then he asked for pardon and then he could able to progress further. Because it's called Ari Upova. If you insult with the wrong mind, with the dosa mind to a noble being, then his uh, attainments will be obstructed in, for that life as long as he doesn't ask for the pardon, right? This is called Arya Upava. And there is called Arya Upahasa. Upahasa means ins like making fun of, a, uh, fun of a noble being, like what happened to the Kujutra. It's like he was, she was pretending about uh, a Pacheka Buddha who had attended their house, who, was, uh, uh, who had a humpback. So she pretended and showed in front of all his uh, uh, queens, and she was a uh, she was in the she was a uh, servant of the palace, and she made fun out of the Pacheka Buddha, and it says she became a kujutra, hunchback person. Even in his uh, life, he became a noble person. So these are the I mean, uh, a sota panna can perform slandering and harsh words, but. That uh, the uh, intensity of such acts are not very strong because there is the absence of sakhaiditi. So, therefore, they are not able to take him to the woeful realms after death. The thing is, only when sakhaiditi is present, these acts get into a higher level which can lead us to the four woeful realms. Right? So, these are the uh, potencies eradicated by Anagami Hood. Then, the main talk, Sampapalapa, is eradicated by. And then uh, Sotapati Manga also eradicate the possibilities for wrong livelihood. Because wrong livelihood is a very mean act, a Sota Panna would never perform any. Uh, have uh, improper livelihood to sustain his life or the others. So this is how the defilements are eradicated. Potencies are eradicated by respective path factors, right? Spiriti Chedasikas. Now a question may arise. Then we also mention <coughs> all the Lokutra Chittas have Virati Chesikas. Then first we have to clarify how it appears in the Pala Chitta because Magga Chittas destroy the potency. Now in the Kama Vachala Chittas we abstain temporarily. We abstain from immoral as temporary. Kama Vachala Kusala Chitta. From the Rupa Arupa Lokutra Magga Chittas they, these potencies are completely eradicated so we can understand it is a temp, uh, permanent sort of a abstain. Permanent sort of abstain. Then what happens with the Pala Chittas Palachittas doesn't abstain from immoral deeds because after they have been indicated by the Sota, the respective Magajitta, there's nothing to be done with the Pal Palachittas functioning is to tranquilize in the mind stream. And also, as when you go beyond the Kamachara level, according to the Theravada tradition, the vipaka of a particular kusala is identical with the characteristics, certain characteristics of the kusala. So there is like a mirror image. Therefore, Virati, found, uh, Virati is found, all the identical factors are found, uh, factors identical to the Magga Chitta are found in the Pala Chitta. Hence, Virati, three Virati is, uh, arises with the Pala Chitta. Right? It's not for the eradication of defile. Then a question comes, why it doesn't appear in the uh, Jhana Chitta? The reason is, if someone wants to attain the Jhana, First, he has to abstain from evil deeds and should have a good morality. So therefore, jhana, the functioning of the jhana is not for abandoning the immoral deeds. It has, the immoral deeds has already been abandoned, so he comes into a very high level of concentration, suppressing the defilements which can destroy our peace. It's not regarding, jhana attainment is not regarding to abstain the immoral acts. It's for the, uh, it's to calm down and develop a higher concentration in the, uh, uh, with regard to samatha meditation and to uh, overcome the uh, pariyutthana kinesas, like which comes into the mind and disturbs our peace. Then a question may also someone can ask, if so, because the nobility, when you want to attain the higher mag magapalas, also you have to have sila perfected before that, because a person who has no sila cannot, cannot attain Neither cannot uh, either attain neither attain um, 
Janas nor the Magabans. So why, if, if it is so, why the Magachittas have been? That is because the functioning of Magachitta, because it eradicates the Kilesas and all the potencies. It's not just for the focus of a certain, certain object. It's not just to focus on Nibbana. Functioning of the Magga is to eradicate because we start the practice with an intention of liberating from the samsara with the eradication. So therefore the Magga Chitta arises eradicating the defilements which are latent. Even someone is virtuous in the beginning of the practice, still he has the potencies. So therefore Virati appears in the Magga Chittas, eradicating the potencies. In the Jhana Chittas, there is no such a suppression is necessary because they have already been suppressed and therefore the, jhana, the function of the Jhana Chitta is to calm down the mind and to calm down the hindrances which disturbs the peace of the mind. So that is why Virati doesn't appear in the Magga Chitta, uh, Jhana Chittas but arises in uh, Magga Chitta. Right? And Palachitta, in Palachitta they arise because the Palachitta is like a mirror image of the Magga Chitta. Then a question may arise, a logical question, because when you look into the Samma Kamantar, if you can, if I can take your attention to the Samma Kamantar, uh, 5.52, uh, 5 Samma Kamantar is 3 4. Right? We have a, a, a Abrahmacharya made a money, but uh, that is a, a doubtful case whether it was scribal error or whether it was really preached by the Buddha. But anyway, the most uh, popular type of Samma Kamanta is Panajpata Miramani Adinadana Kamishmi Chacha, the abstaining from three, three evil deeds, right? So this is called Samma Kamanta. Then a question may arise. Now at the attainment, also I mentioned, we mentioned these three physical deeds are completely abandoned. Potencies for these three physical deeds. Are completely abandoned by Sotapati Magga. Are completely abandoned by Sotapati Magga. Then, if the Sama Kamanta is for abstaining from these three evil deeds, what is the necessity for Sama Kamanta to appear in higher three Maggas? Because if a noble person, Sotapanna, is never going to perform any of these three deeds, because they have been indicated by the Sotapati Kama Kamanta in Sotapati Magga. So, then why such a Kama Kamanta arises in Sakadaga? Why does it arise in Anaga Why does it arise in Arahatta Magga? Because there is no reason. Because the potencies for these three deeds have already been eradicated. So that's why when you ask the question regarding the Bodhisattva's mother, so I mentioned this virati is not only related to these immoral acts which are mentioned. They are related to all the un acts, physical and verbal acts, most of the physical and verbal acts which are related to, which are done with unwholesome Thoughts. For example, when we talk about the Sota Panna and Sakadaga, Sota Panna becomes Sakadaga. When a Sota Panna, he will, he will have a perfect sila, sila in terms of Pancha sila, because he still can have slandering, past speech, he may perform, may talk, right? He may talk. So, the Sota Panna, and also if he observes, the next thing is, if he observes a Sila, Sota Panna observes a certain Sila, maybe a monk Sila, Samanera Sila, or uh, Uposata Sila, he or she will never breach it intentionally. Right? He doesn't get that intention because he has a very strong, powerful faith towards the triple gems and towards the practice. So, therefore, he would never breach that intention. But still, he has the possibility of performing such acts. Then, the difference of a Sotapan and Sakadagami is that his defilement, Sakadagami's defilements are lessened than the Sotapan. It is mentioned, this was, uh, was an argument in the commentaries, and the idea of the Mahatakata means the accepted commentarial tradition of the Mahavihara lineage is that uh, you also already know that Sotapanna have the potencies of sensuality. You know that story of Visaka or Bimbisara, they may perform the sexual intercourse. That is possible within a Sota Panna because he still has a very strong lust. And it is mentioned in the commentaries when the lust arises in Sota Panna, it may come very strongly, but in proper objects. He will never do the sexual misconduct. He may, uh, uh, Mayor Sota Panna may act the sexual intercourse with his wife or a legal prostitute. That is, that is possible for a Sota Panna because such potency is still there. But when he attains the Sakadagami Marga, he is not lessening or destroying any 
extra defilement, but his kamaraga lust will be lessened or it will be reduced. So it is, a, it is told in the commentaries that such a person will not act, do the sexual intercourse. He may have the lustful thoughts very less intense, uh, with a very less intensity, but he will never go into the, such an act. So if we talk about the Samma Kammanta of the Sakadagami Magahu, what does it indicate? It indicates it removes the potencies to such acts like sexual intercourse and so forth. So therefore, when you go further and further in the spiritual path, in the nobility, what happens? Certain acts, acts that are done by lower nobles will be eradicated when he reaches the higher, uh, higher, higher stages. Right? This uh, is why the, all the three viratis are found till we attain the arahatta magahud, arahatta magahud, even though all the three uh, physical misconducts have been completely abandoned even at the level of sotapati magahud. Right? Even at the level. And also this micha ajiva. A sotapati would never do a micha ajiva. But there can be certain acts, that immoral acts that he may perform with related to his life, moral, moral livelihood. It is not breaching the seal of his uh, Samma Ajiva that which are improper. So such acts will be removed by the higher, higher noble path. It means, so when we talk about the Viratis, even though it is mentioned as Samma uh, Pana, uh, killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, slandering, harsh word, and vain talk, these viratis are not exclusive to these immoral acts. Their scope is more wider and more broader than, uh, than the, uh, what we accept. That's why, for example, when we talk about the monks Micha Ajiva, that becomes very clear. Micha Ajiva for monks is not only related, with, related to these uh, immoral acts. A person uh, may not, uh, not good, uh, how to say, not live his life with certain occupations which doesn't involve any of uh, breaching of any of the acts. Like, for example, making his earning by uh, 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 telling about the future, forecasting the future, and also uh, uh, such, such acts. So, these acts are not breaching any of these immoral uh, deeds, but still abstaining from it called, is called Mikcha Aji. So therefore, so the conclusion is that the Samma Kammanta, Samma Vacha and Samma Ajiva, mainly Kammanta and Vacha, are not only related to these seven types of misdeeds, their scope is more wide. And this is how Venerable Lady Siado has explained about the existence of higher uh, virati in higher noble parts, even uh, especially with regard to Samma Kammanta, even the potency for the physical, threefold physical needs have been completely eradicated by the Sotapati Marga. Right? So, these are the points that uh, I want to discuss about it. And in, with regard to its object, if I give a uh, slight, uh, just a brief explanation, Virati, objects of Virati is twofold. It can either be Kama Vachara or it, it can be Nibbana. When it comes, appears in the Lokutra Chitta Chesikas, it objects with Nibbana and it eradicates permanently the potencies for immoral acts. Then, when it comes to uh, uh, Kama Vachara level, its objects are the uh, uh, things that upon which we may perform the immoral acts. For example, uh, if a mosquito is lying on the body and biting, if someone feels to kill and if he abstains from that, the book says the object of this virati is his jivitindriya and with that object he abandons the intentions of killing. So this is how it is explained. And virati may have two types of object, present object and future object. For example, if someone observes the sila, thinking that I will uh, protect the sila for the whole day, so all the creatures who are by being born, who are living in that whole day in the, in the future time, also becomes his object. And sometimes, if someone determines, I will protect the Sila till my end of my life, or uh, for example, abstain from killing, Jivit Indriya of all the beings who appear in the world becomes a general object to this person's Virati. So, likewise, Virati may have a future object and also a present object in the Kama Vachara spirit. And also there was an argument in the literature that some say that Virati has the object of Kilesa. 
if someone abstains from kinesa which i prefer actually but it it is it is rejected in the commentary literature some argue that when we abstain from killing it's not only that we focus on the uh, the jivitindriya life faculty or vitality of the uh, being's body it's also sometimes we abstain from the intention of killing i will not do such a thing so it means he he focuses on his kill intention of killing and abandons it so some teachers used to say virati have this uh, killing immoral uh, the, uh, the mental deeds which also perform that acts and he abstains from that such acts so this is uh, uh, refuted or rejected in the commentary literature so that is the things that i wanted uh, i have to explain about the objects of virati so we'll conclude the uh, conclude the lecture in these two lectures we discussed about the virati abstaining from immoral acts collectively it was threefold uh, collectively the virati was threefold as sampatta virati uh, samadana virati and samucchaya virati samadana virati is keeping the uh, morality uh, of uh, regarding uh, respecting the precept that he has observed sampatta virati is not uh, abstaining from evil acts uh, regarding some other reasons other than the precepts samucchaya virati is completely cutting off the potencies to do any immoral deed then sampatta virati was again fourfold as achara virati uh, sorry first one is dhammata virati uh, pakati virati achara virati dhammata virati and pubbahetu virati then all the these were threefold as samma vacha kammanta and ajiva uh, abstaining from immoral speech immoral physical acts and immoral livelihood and also the term samma vacha was threefold as bohara or katha samma vacha chetana samma vacha and virati samma vacha then samma kammanta was also threefold as kriya obohara samavacha chetana samavacha and virati samavacha mean samma ajiva was to fall as the virati samma ajiva and the effort that we put to uh, live a proper lively hood then we discuss about the difference of the samavacha kammanta and ajiva when someone restrained from immoral acts for the sake of dance for the sake of livelihood it's called micha ajiva samma ajiva when he restrains from immoral acts without any relationship with the livelihood that is called samma vacha or kamanta respect accordingly then we discuss about the arising of samma vacha uh, three vidati chetsikas in certain chittas they may appear in uh, mundane kama vachana kusala chittas and lokutra chittas in mundane kusala chittas one arise at a time and also sometimes while he observe the precepts keep the precepts or restrains without any uh, consideration about the precepts and then uh, in the jhana chitta it doesn't appears because one needs to have uh, perfect the sila in order to attain the jhana at the level of jhanas he what he suppresses is the not the immoral deeds he suppresses the uh, uh, the immo uh, uh, defilements which uh, disturb the tranquility of the mind then when it comes to the lokuttara magga chitta uh, it it has contains it it arises with virati because it has a functioning of eradicating the defilements and also the pot- potentials of uh, doing any immoral deeds then uh, the finally we discuss about even the, how the uh, what sort of uh, potencies are being eradicated by the respective parts uh, virati in the respective parts and uh, even uh, and also we explained the scope of the virati is more broader than the immoral deeds that are being explained in the suttas that is why even the three physical potencies for three physical deeds are completely abandoned by the virati samma kammanta in the sota patimaka uh, has completely eradicated still samma kammanta can be found in higher mantras right so these are the and also briefly explained about the object range of virati right so these are the points that uh, I would like to share, and if you have any questions, yes. Okay. Uh, so according to you, Sota Bhati Magga means they will have Pakata Virati, right? Or will they have? No, this is Pakata Virati is always sampat, under Sampatta Virati. It is Samucheta Virati. Samucheta Virati. Yeah, yeah. So like when the mosquito bites Sota Bhati Magga. Yeah. So will he refrain from not killing or will, will he have just compassion and not do anything? So did you hear the question? Oh, okay. So Bhante is asking after Sota Panna has uh, eradicated the potencies for killing, 
mosquito bites on him will he restrain from killing or will he have they are will because he, he will he restrain from the intention of killing or will he have full compassion he will not get the intention of killing no such a, it's uh, yeah thing i wanted to uh, i forgot to mention when such potencies are removed even not an intention arises in the mind for such acts it's not restraining even not such intention doesn't arise even someone comes to kill a sotapanna not the slightest intention of killing him appears in him right but he may have a wish if it is it is good if this person is dead via bade can be but he will not have because i didn't explain about the last three so that is also uh, but it's not related to virati right it's not related to virati the last three were the abhijja abhijja i tried the five words we covetousness covetousness means wishing is not just the attachment for other things for example one sees a, a, a ipad of another person and he wishes may i get such a thing this is just a low wish he wishes he starts to like that object he attached to that object this is just loba but he he thinks may this ipad particular ipad become mine that such a wish is there that is called covetousness abhijja when it it is not controlled it will go into stealing abhijja is very close to stealing abhijja becomes like a, a very prerequisite for stealing so abhijja arises abhijja is destroyed it is said by anagama then vyapada vyapada is not just anger this is wishing it's better for example for instance if the mosquitoes are biting and to coming to attack in too much it's better if these all mosquitoes are destroyed we get such a feeling right so this sometimes you get such a feeling so if you think it may better better to chase them away it is not vyapada if you think it, it's better if they all die then this is called vyapada just just anger irritation these are not called vyapada according to these ten immoral deeds right and for example when especially when there is war in countries which they have war this kind of vyapada is done by humans most for example when the uh, other party attacks the uh, our our group like the group of a certain person he may curse may that person be dead or may 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 in sri lanka they may the thunder strike at that person and those so so forth right so these kind of verbal acts or wishes also fall in uh, into vyapada this is also abandoned by anaga then we have ichaviti especially this talks about the three wrong views the fixed wrong views but it's sotapanna is have abandoned this sotapanna but also we have to say whether it's gross or subtle all sort of wrong views are abandoned by sotapanna in the 10 immoral days we talk about only niyatam ichaviti right but uh, they uh, sotapanna abandons also whether subtle or gross whatever ichaviti will be abandoned by sotapanna so he may get uh, such a wish but not the intention to so it says uh, there is a story like uh, there was a, a rebellion rebel, rebel right rebellion happened in a, in a in a far away district the while of the uh, region of the uh, king bimbisa who was a sotapanna according to our literature so then he sent his uh, ministers to subdue the rebellion then they, they went and they killed the uh, uh, how ones who did the rebel the rebels and uh, came back but it say the command say that the king didn't have any intention of killing he just said go and control it he was he had done it with a very pure mind but it was the ministers who go and perform their so such a in such a manner kill volition of killing doesn't appear volition of stealing or sexual misconduct never appears in a sotapanna person any questions okay so then we'll conclude the class i'll be doing class tomorrow in the same time